Hello, it is Social Media Saturday, November 14th, 2020. Steve Cypress here, and the Stampede is on the social media app Parlor. The mispronunciation Parlor was meant to be Parlay, as in the French, to talk, Parlay. But of course, who cares what it was meant to be? As always, doesn't matter what you say about your business. It's what other people say about your business is what matters. And no matter what the founder of Parlor thought it was going to be pronounced as, it is pronounced Parlor. So the heck with Parlay and Parlay Vu and all that kind of stuff. It's Parlor, damn it. That's the way it is. Anyway, Parlor is the alternative to Twitter that has all pretty much the same stuff you can like, but that's called Echo. You can, or that's retweet. Retweet is echo. Like is upvote and all this kind of stuff. But basically, it's a refuge for the conservatives that have been uh, crapped on by the leftist social media sites like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and Google, not a social media site, but all that leftist crap that uh, is, has done everything they could to hurt conservatives, including did everything they could this time because they were kicking themselves in 2016 that they didn't stop Trump. But this time, they definitely had a big hand in it. And that set off the mass exodus. And for the past two weeks, Parler has been the number one download on the Apple App Store and Google Play. And it just keeps going with uh, six figures worth of downloads, which, of course, uh, the numbers are low, six figures. What are you talking about? Parler has something like eight million downloads and a uh, little less than 4 million daily users, while Twitter has 350 million downloads and about 190 million daily users. And Facebook, of course, has over 2.5 billion users. Uh, I don't know daily users, but downloads at least. Uh, and, of course, there's a lot of bots and fake apps, uh, fake accounts and all that kind of stuff there. But still, uh, Parler is small beans, tiny compared to Twitter, but you got to start somewhere. And so for, for years, I've been telling uh, my friends that are re Republicans, conservatives, that gripe and complain about Twitter and Facebook and how they censor uh, Republicans and conservatives and throw them off. And, and, you know, since the election, they've just nonstop been, quote, fact-checking or correcting or whatever their BS is for, for Trump's uh, statements. I mean, give, a, give, give me a break. If a guy who lost an election or is close or whatever and just goes, I won the election, like, oh, oh, we have to fact check it. Oh, that's not actually true. In a way. That's how people talk. That's what people say. Hey, I was robbed. Hey, I won. Hey, bad call. I can. Hey, that was a great movie. Bad movie. What are they going to fact check? If I say uh, 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 The Godfather was a bad movie, they're going to put a fact check on? Oh, no. Actually, The Godfather is an acclaimed movie that won the Academy Award for Best Picture and is uh, seen as one of the all-time greatest. What? But I said it's a bad movie. I mean, the whole BS of them deciding to censor or explain or fact check or anybody's opinions or statements on social media is absurd. And uh, I've been saying for years, so stop using it. Just stop using Twitter, stop using Facebook, go somewhere else. Certainly, there's, uh, there's enough. I know all the, you know, the Democrat Party has become the party of the rich. Uh, but there's still got to, there's plenty of rich Republicans. There's got to be one or two that can hire some people to code and put together an alternative social media site where the conservatives will go. And uh, Parler seems to be it, at least for the moment. People are flocking there in record numbers now. And uh, we'll see if it takes off. Of course, the number one uh, most prominent, notorious slash uh, Twitter user, President himself, uh, has not yet gone to Parler. The Trump campaign, I think, has an account with a couple of million users on Parler, followers. But uh, Trump himself hasn't gone there and left his 90 million Twitter followers or whatever, or 32 million Facebook followers. Uh, if that happens, like, ba boom but in the meantime, it's got to start somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's similar to uh, how I uh, consult with clients to help them start a business if they already have a job or a business or if they have a current business, they want to sec start a second one. I always counsel them, don't leave your current business to start a second stream of income. Don't leave your job to start your business on the side. You build up your business 
until you can make a decision to leave your main source of income. Same for a second location or a new product or a second stream of income in a business. Don't, don't just give up the thing that's working and then take a chance and start the new one. You do both at the same time until the second one builds enough. Well, it's the same with social media. I don't think anyone that's going on to Parler is canceling out of Twitter. I mean, a bunch of them were thrown off Twitter. Uh, but it's not like, oh, don't just give up all your followers and, and your history, whatever, on Facebook or Twitter. But people are heading over to Parler, and we'll see what happens. So if you've uh, heard of it or you're wondering what it is, that's Parler. It's, uh, they are much more open about certain kinds of free speech. Uh, any kind of political speech is okay. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, a, you know, I make the joke all the time. It's kind of like a cell phone. I'm like, uh, could you imagine if like, uh, you know, suddenly I was having a conversation with somebody about something and, and phone went dead and it was a dial tone? Uh, what happened? Oh, well, I guess I was saying something. I said Trump won and Sprint didn't like that. So they ended the call. Or even worse, they just, uh, then I can't even get back a dial tone. My phone doesn't work anymore. They shut me off. Can you imagine? AT&T, Sprint, whatever, they shut me off. Closed me down. Fact checked me. Somebody came on while I was having a conversation and said, you know, I think Trump actually won Ohio or Georgia, whatever these states are that, that he's, quote, contesting still or whatever. Like, uh, you know, what if I said that on a phone call and <laughs> suddenly an operator came on and said, actually... Uh, Biden won that state. Excuse what's with the fact checking? Like, leave people alone. That's what Twitter's supposed to be or Facebook, unless they're doing something absolutely violent, threatening violence or danger, which, by the way, all that stuff's allowed anyway. I mean, there's all kinds of people on there that are doing, using social media with all kinds of violent stuff and, and, uh, and organizing mostly peaceful, in other words, violent protests. Uh, but Go ahead, the, the President of the United States wants to spout his opinion like, oh no, we can't say that. So, you know, if you've heard of Parler, that's what it is. Now as a business owner, you wanna make money with Parler. Uh, when they do monetize, they have uh, tipped their hat, and I spoke about this on a Social Media Saturday video a few months ago. Uh, they said uh, there's not gonna be the same kind of advertising on Parler as there is on, say, Twitter or Facebook, where you place an ad and it runs into somebody's feed. The way Parler says they're going to work is you will advertise on an influencer's account. So let's just say Trump did go to Parler and got millions of followers, uh, which, by the way, uh, there's a mix on Parler of the conservatives as a refuge running away from the leftist uh, anti-conservative websites, uh, social media sites. But then there's also a whole host of taunters. Uh, that come over leftists that just come over to have fun and go over to Parler. I say come over, I'm not on Parler, but they go over to Parler to have fun by arguing and making fun of the conservatives there. But it's mostly a conservative thing, right? Uh, I guess that's kind of similar to, uh, you can see it a lot this year, but I know the first time around five years ago, the Trump rallies, there would be these instigators coming in, right? These anti-Trumpers coming in that they had to get thrown out and Trump threatened them, hey, beat them up, I'll pay your... I'll pay your uh, legal bills and all that kind of nonsense. Like that's kind of the, the leftists on parlor are coming over just to, to make fun of and taunt the conservatives. And once in a while, they actually get tossed off of parlor because one of the rules parlor has is anti-spam. And their definition of spam is repetitive, irrelevant comments. So if a conservative puts up a comment and goes, I think Trump won the election, and a leftist just puts a comment on going, you're a loser, uh, that's irrelevant. Who cares if I'm a loser? You know, that's got nothing to do with it. You don't even know who I am. So they get thrown out for that kind of stuff, but not for just stating your opinion, whether it's left, right, indifferent, whatever. Uh, also, uh, Twitter, uh, another difference, I don't know if it matters to you, but Twitter allows pornography with consent and restrictions and whatever, and Parler does not. So there's some minor differences, but basically Parler is saying, let people talk, which means conservatives are welcome. Twitter says let people talk, but only if you're leftist and liberal. Uh, so let's see what happens. I mean, all good things come to an end. I've been talking about it for years. You know, people think that, oh, Facebook, they're huge. Like, for, Yeah, they are. Google, Facebook, yeah, they're huge. They're influential or whatever. And one day they'll be gone. Now, will it be because of Parler? We'll see. Could be another site, could be whatever. But finally, it looks like at least some of the conservatives are finally realizing that if you really want to complain about Twitter, stop using it.
right? If I went to a restaurant and every time I show up, I complain, the waiters are rude, food is terrible, but you keep coming back, the owner would just laugh at me. And that's what's happening. The leftist owners of the social media, Zuckerberg and, and Jack over at Twitter, they're just laughing at conservatives. And like, wow, they complain all the time. Of course we censor them. Of course we, we hate them. Of course we do everything to stop them. And yet they still keep coming on every day. They're logging in and they're posting their stuff. And what idiots. We're making money off of them and we're manipulating them and we're destroying their candidate. And the idiots keep using our thing like... If that's you and, and, and you're complaining about Facebook or Twitter, can, you know, censoring you or your buddies or your candidate or your, your president or whatever it is, then like, why do you keep using it? What's the matter with you? Well, you're giving them the power. Go to parlor. Go to somewhere else. Uh, but uh, quit your complaining and do something about it. Anyway, that's parlor. That's social media Saturday. And uh, let's see. I got some questions, comments, concerns. Uh, Jeremy Danley is here. Great seeing you. Toby is here. Uh, Jeremy Danley says, when an MMA fight ends in a draw, both fighters put up their arms in victory. No one accuses them of lying. See, I don't know anything about that. MMA is uh, mixed martial arts. That's where they, I never understood that. Barefoot guys kick somebody in the face with their bare foot. Like, don't put your smelly foot in my face. Like, I'm a boxing fan, but I, I can't follow all that stuff with its combination, right, of wrestling, boxing, and I don't know, mixed martial arts, right? It's a combination of a bunch of martial arts, I guess. Uh, anyway, uh, and uh, in a draw, both fighters put the runs. Well, this isn't a draw, though, right? I mean, there's no such thing as a draw in an election. Somebody wins. you got to put somebody in office. Um, but uh, no one can... Yeah, that's a good point, though, right? Uh, they both put their arms up in victory, but I don't know. I don't know how it, how it works in MMA, but a draw... Uh, they both put their arms up. The ref, like, holds both arms up. It's a draw, but... I don't think when you hold both arms up, it's victory. I think when you hold both up, it means draw. But I'm uh, right. I mean, nobody accuses anybody in any contest of lying if they're disgruntled and want to argue and say they won. I mean, is Twitter taking down all the posts of MMA or any other, you know, football players? But, hey, you know, we actually won that game, but we were robbed. The red was a bad call. I mean, sometimes there are bad calls, right? Like in the Super Bowl, the World Series even. There's like a bad call. And if somebody goes, I still consider we won. Does Twitter take down the thing and, and, and kick them off the platform? Like, oh, it's obvious bias. So, like I said, you know, everyone knows it's bias against conservatives. Conservatives, get off the thing if you don't like it. Get off. Phil Brakefield, oh, I see Emmanuel's picture over your shoulder. What a good boy he was. Yeah, well, actually, uh, here on Facebook, where I'm recording this, my Facebook profile photo still to this day has the original photo of me and our beloved rambunctious Cocker Spaniel Emmanuel. And uh, he's here in the background somewhere. Oh, there he is in the corner. Yeah, and I got a whole bunch of other photos. Look at that. Yeah, what a good boy. Anyway, uh, that's our beloved rambunctious Cocker Spaniel. Once in a while, I get a Facebook friend request still, and they go, uh, oh, love your doggy. I'm like, we did too. Oh, I'm so sorry. Did? Oh, he's a... like, I see it's the same thing as like Twitter or Facebook. Life goes on or the election. Life goes on. Your candidate won or we lost. Life goes on. It's not a good thing. I'm not saying it's good when your dog dies, but life goes on. Life happens. Get over it and go on, especially if you're a business owner. My goodness, if you are dwelling on every bad thing that happens, you ought not be a business owner, that's for sure. And Jerdog says both fighters... Oh, now he's going to help me out here. Uh, Jerdog says both fighters act as if they won before the decisions. Oh, right, exactly. Yeah, that's true, right? So when there's a fight... Well, boxing, boxing, I know. When there's a boxing match, there's no knockout. And it goes to a decision, and they wait like three minutes for everyone to add it up on their cards and has to be looked over by the commission and okayed and certified. And same thing as this election thing and whatever... They're both walking around the rim with their arms up in the air and everyone day one, my guy, everyone in the stands is like, pay up on the bet, my guy definitely won. Like my, oh, would Twitter, would, would the lights go off in the arena? Hey, I heard the guy in section 18 in the third row say his guy won. That's not actually true because the media has projected the other guy. Well, like, shut up, let people talk, okay? Uh, right now I'm, I'm recording this on a Sprint cell phone. Like if I say something Sprint doesn't like, does the phone go off? Uh, I mean, you know, cut the crap. Like, so 
Twitter, Facebook, when they finally have their demise and go away, if this is any part of it, what they did in 2020 to conservatives, like they have only themselves to blame. But we'll see what happens anyway. And uh, Phil says, when I was a boxer, there you go, see? Now we have an actual former champion boxer. When I was a boxer, I was too tired to... <laughs> That's... I've heard you say that. Uh, too tired to raise your arms after a fight, although Phil knows better than anybody, boxing is not about the arms, it's all about the legs. So Phil would actually say, I was too tired to even stand the heck up. What are you talking about? Uh, but anyway, before somebody decides to put their bare foot and kick me in the face, I'm gonna call it a day here on Social Media Saturday, but we're having some fun now, aren't we? And uh, wait a minute, is fun allowed? On Facebook? I'm recording this live on Facebook on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash smallbizhelp, which I've done every single day, recorded a live video uh, since uh, March of 2017. And uh, I guess so far I haven't said anything that Facebook really doesn't like too much, or maybe they don't just, I'm so insignificant, they don't care about me, or they just love my rambunctious Cocker Spaniel Emmanuel too much to kick me off, or who knows what. But anyway, I guess I'm still here for now. See how long I'm here, see how long Facebook is around, see how long anything happens. All I know is life goes on. But that's the news on Parlay. Oh, sorry, Parlor for Social Media Saturday, November 14th, 2020. Thanks everyone for being here and thanks to Jared Dog and Phil for all the fun. Hope everyone else enjoyed yourselves as much as I did. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. I'll catch you back here tomorrow. On Sunday, fun day, over and out, woof. Bye-bye.